us. I am so excited for you to meet today's guest, Dr. Matthew Murphy. He brings the lens of a leader, a superintendent, embracing social media and the importance that it can bring to your school district. He has so many examples, you guys, of how it helped with uh, uh, some facilities and referendum type questions. Um, he has really talked about how it helped with the political struggles that we've been going through and how a positive social media presence can really help with that. Um, he talked specifically about their profile of a graduate program and how that really fed into the way that they were telling stories, the way that they were communicating. Um, I think you're gonna have so many takeaways from this discussion that's gonna change the way that you're telling stories for your school or school district. Gosh, I can't wait for you to meet Dr. Matthew Murphy. Um, but before we get started, just a reminder of all the free resources in addition to this awesome podcast um, that I have out on socialschoolforedu.com. You guys can jump over to my blog section and I've got hundreds and hundreds of articles to search through. There's a search bar on your computer right on the right-hand side. And if you're on your mobile device, you have to kind of scroll down to the bottom uh, of that blog page, but you can search by topic. So if you are looking for something on LinkedIn, if you are looking for something for Instagram, if you are looking for something about Facebook Business Manager, um, you can check out uh, that search feature and it'll take you right to a free blog article that'll give you tips and tricks that are working for K-12 schools across the country. I give away my best advice for free. Um, I, I have some paid programs, which I'd love to have you in as well. Uh, but I just want to make sure you know how much is at your fingertips on that website, not only uh, podcast episodes on certain topics, uh, but those blog articles. So uh, take a look at that. Before we jump in to our awesome interview, we're going to cover a quick K-12 PR tip. All right. Today's K-12 PR tip is all about the timing of potentially controversial or things that might evoke some emotion from your community putting those things out on social media. So I just want to give you an example. We um, have some snow days up here in Wisconsin, right? And sometimes we call off snow before the snowstorm even comes because be, because it's a big winter storm warning. And sometimes you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, we might have been able to have school. Well, we recently had to say, hey, we are going to cancel the rest of our late start Mondays. Um, each month we had a late start planned we're going to have full days because we don't want to have to make up these snow days at the end of the school year. So um, my school, which New Auburn is where my girls go to school, they reached out and asked me to put it out on social media and that they were going to be putting out an email. And I said, you know what, let's use that 24 delay, 24 hour delay before we put it out on social media so that if people are upset, Maybe they go on their own page and rant about it. Maybe it's not going to be a rant at all. Maybe, you know, I'm I'm overthinking it. Um, but hopefully it doesn't show up on our social media pages as a big to-do of saying, well, why did you cancel school on this, this, and this day or whatever? So sometimes there is a guidance, and this really came from Heidi Feller on my team, um, who would advise this to our schools that we serve of, hey, get the direct communication out first. And if you still feel like you want to put something out there on social media, wait 24 to 48 hours and then simply say, hey, we sent out some information regarding our, the rest of our snow days and canceling our late starts going forward. Um, make sure you check your email for all of those details. And we don't put all of the details on the social media page because guess who cares about it? the parents who should have gotten the direct communication anyways, and not the whole community who might start commenting, even though they don't even have any kids that go to your school. So um, just a little tip to remember um, that it's not necessary to have things go out at the exact same time. Uh, sometimes that little bit of a delay on social media can really help you out. All right, let's get to today's awesome interview with Dr. Matthew Murphy. Dr. Matthew Murphy's in the house. How are you? I'm doing great and happy new year to you and your listeners. Yes, we got a lot of energy on this call. Um, Matthew and I met at Enspra 
last year became kind of fast friends. And I'm so excited to have you on the call. You have a lot of experience in the superintendent role and the leadership role. You kind of just stepped in to a new way of helping uh, school leaders out there. So why don't you kind of share your background and your experience um, in, in leading schools? Uh, thank you. And thank you for inviting me on to the podcast. I really appreciate it. So I just retired after 14 years in the superintendency here in northern New Jersey. And before that, I was a, you know, principal assistant superintendent. I started my career as an elementary school teacher. What grade? I started in second grade, then I graduated to fifth grade, and I loved every minute of it. In fact, at my retirement party, a bunch of my former fifth grade students came back and uh, spoke without being asked about, you know, our time together. So that was amazing. Every educator who's listening, you know, realizes that's what it's all about, the impact that you have on, on students, not necessarily a test score or an essay or uh, an assignment. And then I've been involved in higher education for 18 years. And the last decade, I've been focusing in on principal leadership and preparing the next generation of administrators uh, for New Jersey. And I'm proud that we have over 50 graduates sitting either in a supervisor, principal, or superintendent position throughout the state. And um, I'm gonna continue that journey in retirement because I think uh, coaching as essential it is for, for our teachers to receive coaching, I think um, an often overlooked part of the ecosystem, so to speak, is, are our administrators. Um, we kind of forget about them when it comes to professional development, and we really forget about them when it comes to coaching. So that's the next step in my journey. Yeah. And if you're watching this online, we put this show out on YouTube, you're going to be like, Dr. Matthew Murphy is not old enough to retire. Um, <laughs> so you've put in a lot of years um, in education. You said 33 total? Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And how much wisdom you have to share. Uh, but social media, I bet, is keeping you on your toes in regards to leading these new leaders. So I guess just as a superintendent, um, for your school there in New Jersey that you were with the last uh, school district. Yeah. How did social media fit into your role there? That was great. Thank you. Um, great question. I was in Ramsey, New Jersey, which is a suburb of New York City, right in in Bergen County, northern New Jersey, right across the George Washington Bridge. And I was there for a decade and absolutely had the time of my life. Uh, met some wonderful people. Social media was a game changer. Um, I was late to embrace it, so I would say it was 2015, okay. 2014, when I started to embrace it. Um, I had that typical skepticism um, concerning, uh, because as a former principal and so forth, you're dealing with the, the negative side when it comes to students. Um, and I started slowly. I dipped my toes in the water. But I always knew, even as an elementary school teacher and principal, that telling one's story is so important in public education. And I would try to tell our story uh, minus social media, face-to-face uh, -face communication, which still is you know, essential, but email blasts, old-fashioned newsletters, and so forth. But I saw the power of social media uh, with my, my children, my daughters and the, the influence that it can have and how that actually becomes the narrative in many cases. Um, so I, I started with Twitter and uh, Instagram and then graduated to Facebook. And it, it helped us immensely with the passing of the biggest referendum in the history of Ramsey. Wow. Yeah, $43.5 million. And to put it into context for your listeners, we have a budget of about $74 million. Oh. And then we we followed that up with a second vote for uh, every day, all day kindergarten. So Ramsey was one of five districts in the state of New Jersey when I got there that didn't have 
all day, every day kindergarten. Kindergarten is not mandated in the state of New Jersey, but of the 600 plus school districts, we were one of about five. And I, I don't quote me exactly, but in that estimate, and that was one of my goals when I got there was to just sh demonstrate why full day, everyday kindergarten was so important. And I credit a lot to social media in telling the story of Ramsey, both for the facilities referendum and for the need to move to all day, everyday kindergarten. Yeah. Um, how big was your district in Ramsey? About how many students? We fluctuated between uh, 2750 and 2900 students, okay. which is a medium small district in New Jersey. Again, we, we have about 630 districts. We, we have districts with 150 students, and then we have districts with 15,000 students. Okay. So. Yeah. And okay. So you started with Twitter and then you got on Instagram, then you embraced Facebook, which is like sometimes the exact opposite that some yes. people do. Although <laughs> tw uh, Twitter is big with educators. So I totally yes. get that. So at Ramsey, were you the one running the social media or did you have somebody on your team that helped run it? No, I, I did it um, because the buck stops with me. So if there was going to be a mistake, I wanted it to be with me. Um, yeah. And one of the things that I've learned, and, and um, you, I've often heard you talk about this, uh, either on your weekly uh, work or your podcast, is the timeliness of social media. And I realized that early on, and we're just not a large enough district to have a communications person. Mm -hmm. And so often, all the information is fed through me, or I know it. So if I needed a timely response... It was it just it was better off coming from me than from others. Um, but that's I'm talking about kind of the district voice. Right. It, principals, we trained all of our administrators on it. It was part of our new teacher induction program. It still continues to be part of our new teacher induction program. So our teachers um had the green light from the very beginning to tell their story with Instagram and um, Twitter. So, oh, okay. So um, just as far as, you know, you talked about your skepticism at first, you're dealing with all the negative stuff and it's only gotten worse with Snapchat chat and TikTok and kids being younger and younger and getting on, you know, social media platforms and all the bad stuff. Um, but you quickly saw how it really can cause some good influence, but why do you think schools and school leaders are still failing to really fully embrace social media and fully like take advantage of all that positivity that can come out of it? Why, why do you think that is? Uh, I'm often asked that question. I'm often asked to speak to boards of ed about this because when we're growing up in the administrative world, we never took a class on communication. It wasn't part of our pedigree, so to speak. When we became principals, we were taught about the importance of a guaranteed and viable curriculum. We were talked about the we were taught about the importance of instructional leadership and what does effective teaching look like? What are the look fors and the red flags? We were taught taught about school finance. Never, I, there's not a program around that talks about the importance of communication. And oftentimes, skilled uh, administrators are people, person, people, per, people, person, yeah. people, you know what I mean. Yeah. And yeah. So we're great at talking one on one, we're great at addressing a faculty or a PTO meeting, but that's just one part of communication. So that's not part of who we are in terms of our professional background. And I implore uh, administrative preparatory programs to integrate why communication is now, I think, one of the top two or three essential skills for building level and central office administration to understand. And part of that is social media. A large part of that is the power of social media. So it, it it's not that we don't want to, 
we don't think about it. It's not part of the upbringing of being an administrator. And then when you see all the negativity, right, uh, around it, it, it scares so many of us uh, away from it because we don't know it. We're still the immigrant to, to being digital natives. We don't have experience. So, you know, I think it's one of the top three community, uh, top three skills an administrator needs to be highly proficient in if they're going to be successful in the next, you know, five to 10 years. Well, if you look at all of the portraits of a graduate programs that are out there in schools, put those together. We have the first one, Andrea, we have the first one in the state of New Jersey. Oh, really? So, so I look bet, up Ramsey. Yeah. I, I bet communication is on there, yep. right? Because I have six kids, you have daughters. We, I know that my kids are going to be successful because they are good communicators yes. and I'm teaching them to be independent and, you know, communicate well, both written and verbally. I mean, that is such a key to success. And so the fact that in some of these administrative programs, there's no class for all my listeners. I just want you to really hear this from, from Matthew is that, you know, what kind of training can you provide to your leaders? Because I know I'm in a lot of groups with you. You're like, Oh gosh, they asked me to do some training. Um, you might be the only training they have. Uh, yeah. And so training and, you know, general communication and telling them seven times, even though, you know, somebody's like, I didn't know we had a referendum. And it's like, oh my gosh, did you see the the flyer, the emails, the things on our website, the social media posts, the, you know, this and that. Um, but it's so true. It's communication is, is a very important. Definitely the top three. You got anything to add to that? No, I, I agree. And I, I wish, like I mentioned to you, I, I caught on to it about 2015, but I wish I had it earlier mm -hmm. um, because I really think back on missed opportunities when I was a director of curriculum and in my other positions in which I could have really educated and told the story um, from the uh, educator's perspective. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes I say this to when I'm coaching, if it's you, if it's not your message out there, it's someone else's message. Right. So I'd rather you have your message out that they have to knock off the perch than you having to knock off a negative or oftentimes inaccurate message. And right. we're just not geared that way. We're just, it's not part of our DNA yet. And I can see, I saw firsthand in over the last three years in Northern New Jersey, how those districts that didn't communicate well really had much larger obstacles when it came to COVID and the political fight here in New Jersey, which was across the country about CRT and LGBTQ plus issues and so forth. Those who knew how to communicate were in a far better position than, than those who didn't. They were often playing defense. Right. And we're not, we're, Andrea, we're not wired that way. We're wired to talk about teaching for understanding and effective instruction and classroom management. It's analogous to wellness and mental health, that we, we weren't taught about mental health first aid when you went for your methods, classes, and teaching. But now it is an essential part of every educator's bag of tricks to be schooled in uh, mental health, you know, first aid kind of, uh, you know, strategies. Right. Yeah. Which is such a crisis right now. Yes. So you talk about advocating mental health. Um, you know, you use social media in a lot of different ways to really kind of connect your community. Um, you mentioned facilities and, and mental health and even your profile of a graduate program. So can you just kind of share how you went about making sure to communicate some of those things and engage your community in those conversations? Terrific. So uh, we, as I mentioned, we were the first K-12 district in the uh, state of New Jersey to develop a portrait of a graduate. We call it a profile of a graduate. Okay. 
I'm actually doing a whole workshop on March 20th on this because so many districts are interested in how to do it. And that was the very first thing we did was work on developing the profile of a Ramsey graduate. Then, very purposely and strategically, I launched my social media blitz. Okay. So in the background, while we were developing the profile, and that was my second or third year as superintendent, I was personally just learning what Twitter is, what a hashtag is, all those basic things that, you know, people listening are probably saying, ooh, you had to learn that? You just should know that. But when you're my age, learning new things are, are a bit of a challenge. So we developed this incredible uh, profile of a Ramsey graduate. A graduate. It's based on John Wooden's Pyramid of Success. Okay. And um, our hashtags, and this was very strategic, I developed three or four hashtags Teaching hashtag teaching for understanding, uh, hashtag POG profile of a Ramsey graduate. Um, and our tweets were very deliberate. Mm -hmm. What's going on in our classroom and attaching it to the profile of a graduate. So if you're doing this uh, unit in writing in third grade, we would attach it to what part of the profile we're talking about addressing. So mm -hmm. whether it's communication or critical thinking or collaboration. So we were very, I was very deliberate to really do a, a full blitz of social media timed with our new, newly developed uh, profile of a Ramsey graduate. And our tweets and our Instagram posts were very deliberate with the four hashtags that we used Um and, and we we made sure the whole district understood what the hashtags were and why, when to use them and how to use them. Okay. Yeah, you talk about a very important thing, which is some of the strategy and the strategic storytelling that you get to keep, you know, tell whether you've got the profile of a graduate or you have a strategic plan or maybe, you know, you talk about the years being built on John Wooden's pillars of success. You know, you might have some pillars of success or, uh, you know, for your district. How are you telling those stories and those can get tied in? very seamlessly because that stuff should be happening every single day. Um, and so you can, uh, you know, kind of tell those stories in that way so that people really understand like, wow, they walk the talk, right? They don't just talk the talk, they walk the talk and then they get to see it uh, right there in front of them through pictures, through videos, through those tweets, right? Yeah, and pictures, as you know, pictures are such, you know, a valuable, powerful, that, that's really the power behind social media, in my mind, are pictures and videos. So we, we had to learn how to not just capture the picture, but be deliberate in the first two sentences, three sentences, to why or how it connects to our profile of a Ramsey graduate. And, you know, a lot of mistakes on my end, a lot of wordiness, each word matters, but, you know, when you're on the run, you know, so I look back and look at some of those tweets and I bet you would cringe at them in the beginning years, but it's kind of like your eighth grade uh, school photo. Mom, why'd you let me go out in that <laughs> outfit? But right. It, you got to, you got to start somewhere. Right? Yeah. You, you got to start, start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. And it was really powerful. And so we had a hashtag that facilities matter when we went out for the referendum. Mm -hmm. So we created our profile. This is at the end of 12th grade. This is what we want your Ramsey children, your, your children, parents to come out with, but look at our facilities. Learning is impacted by facilities and facilities impact learning. You cannot teach inquiry based science if you don't have the facilities. Right. So it was that strategy that I had. So I didn't even launch the referendum until I was three or four years into my social media campaign with my profile campaign. And I had to hold back a lot of parents who were chomping at the bit for the referendum because we didn't create enough swell. We didn't create enough, you know, understanding of it. 
And I'm proud to say both votes, you know, passed overwhelmingly with over 63% of the vote. And everyone, you know, thought it what wouldn't have passed when I got there okay. six, six years before that. So awesome. I do think being deliberate is really important. Yeah, congratulations. Thank and you. with those success stories, I'm assuming in your coaching now with, with emerging leaders and these principles that are going to, you know, teachers are moving on to principals, principals are moving on to superintendency. Um, you know, how are you kind of coaching those, teaching those um, staff members to embrace this social media? Um, what are some of your strategies there? We use, I use a lot of examples from around mm -hmm. the country about the power of uh, social media, how it can um, derail uh, great initiatives, mm -hmm. how it can stop initiatives from even starting, and how it can help not just build a brand, right? So building a brand is really important, but really educating your community on how complex teaching and understanding is. You know, it, everyone thinks they can be a teacher because they went to school, but for those of us who taught, it is an absolutely complex craft that we're talking about and we have to do a better job. So I use a lot of examples. We do what we call the problem of practice in which we kind of dissect a problem each coaching section and and part of the solutions is the communication how did they communicate what didn't they communicate or what didn't work when they communicated and i will tell you that most problems have a communication strand to it <laughs> i yeah. don't care you know it's yeah. not always school finance it's the communication of why we had to raise the budget right you know or why we had to cut teachers Right. You know, there's a communication into that. It's not just a budget issue. It's a communication attached to it. Right. So you mentioned your profile of a graduate having a program on March 20th. Is that right? Monday, March 20th. Uh, and I'm going to walk people through how we developed the profile. And a huge part of that is the branding and communication end of it, because there are a lot of profile of graduates popping up, but like um, vision statements, they're just going to be a visual vision statement that sits on a wall and it doesn't become the North Star. And unless you are deliberate about your profile being your North Star and you, and you have deliberate communication strategies, it's truly just an, another waste of time and there are just so many mission statements and vision statements and strategic planning sessions that I scratch my head at all the time and resources wasted because it's a wonderful process, but they don't communicate it and they don't continue to attach what they're doing and why they're doing it to what's going on in school. So right. it's it's a two and a half hour program. It's an overview. Um, is it online? Can people sign up? I don't know. I can find that out. But okay. Uh, but it, but you're doing it in person. They're in somewhere. We're in New doing Jersey. it in per in person. Uh, I've teamed up with the New Jersey Principals and Supervision uh, Supervisors Association. Okay. Which is a um, they've asked me to come down to their headquarters. It's on Monday, March twentieth. Okay. But it, if any of your listeners are interested, it doesn't matter if you're in the state of New Jersey, they can just contact me and I'd be more than willing to help them. Okay. So we've got show notes that has your contact information. Um, but I may want to talk to you after this, because it might be a really good workshop for my membership group. I do trainings all the time in my membership program. Sure. Um, and so I'll, I'll chat with you on that. Um, this is really good. I love getting this aspect of, you know, a lot of times I'm talking to school communicators, um, getting to talk to, you know, a former superintendent and somebody that's been in education for so long. It just brings some really unique views. So I really appreciate it. Um, as we kind of wrap up, what was one of your biggest struggles when it came to social media and trying to run that as a superintendent? 
um, I can guess, but uh, what what would you say is your biggest struggle? Well, for me, it was, do I respond or don't I respond or okay. don't I respond? Okay. Yep. So I'm a pretty passionate um, educator. <laughs> I wear my emotions on my sleeves. I'm very, I just stepped down from uh, being the board president of one of the largest uh, mental health uh, institutes in the state of New Jersey. I'm a huge advocate for the LGBTQ plus community. So during the uh, our political time, you know, yeah. uh, uh, it was what do I respond to and what don't I respond to? Right. Uh, you know, I was pretty good at time management of it because I learned how to uh, schedule posts. Uh-huh. <laughs> For anyone who's uh, out there who's a superintendent and you're worried about time, you can learn how to schedule and anticipate. Mm -hmm. Andrea's calendar or events are a great way to, to get started and really produce your own. So I was producing my own kind of to-do and calendar, but it was the, do, do you respond in the back and forth or do you let it go? Right. Yeah. And that is, that still is a struggle, but you don't, yeah. you, you don't win many war of words on social media. So you kind of got to get some thick skin and be careful what you post about in the first place. Right. Cause you're not like trying to poke the bear. Yeah. Um, so that's great. So um, what's the, what would you say is your best social media tip? Uh, try, I'm going to use this word again, connect it to wh why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. So I, I think educators do a wonderful job of, oh, look, they're, they're working on cubes, but they don't connect on how sophisticated that activity is. So yes, parents love seeing pictures of their own children. Wonderful. But one or two sentences on why that's so important mm -hmm. that I call a connection, maybe in the communication world, there's a, a, a professional term. But we need to do a better job of explaining what the picture is in terms of why it's so important. Why are we spending time in school? And, you know, what are the benefits of it? And that's hard to do in three sentences. Yeah. Well, it reminds me of a post that I had seen from like some 4K students and that they were learning how to make like hot chocolate and just like all of the motors, fine motor skills that you have to do when you're doing some of those things. And this post from this specific school took the time to explain. Yes. It's not just like, hey, we're having this snack. It's actually teaching a lot of those life skills, which I think are awesome um, for these little kids. And uh, it's it has all has a purpose, right? It, it does, Andrea. That's a great example. And it becomes harder as they get older. Right. Right. So it becomes harder on uh you know why are you learning algebra too or but there is a reason why and we need to embrace the difficulty and it does take time but we really need to synthesize why critical thinking what critical thinking looks like in the higher grades and here is an example of it because it's been co-opted in political land that education is telling children students what to think I've never experienced that. We're teaching children and giving them the okay to think. Mm -hmm. And we're teaching them what critical thinking is. You may not like the, the the outcome parent of what you're, you know, I want everyone to have free college. You may not like that, mm -hmm. but, you know, a seventh grader wants to save the world, you know, and everyone. Uh, but we have to teach critical thinking I think it is a central part of uh, education, but we have to showcase how we do it and why it's so important. And that's what I think social media can do. Yeah. One other quick example was, um, I don't know about you, Matthew, but I always hated the uh, team projects because, you know, I was like, believe it or not, you know, I'm a straight A student. Right. And so I was, I was a go-getter and everything was a challenge and I was going to, and not every student is like that. So then you're like, I'm picking up the slack for them, but oh, what, I would have been on your team, Andrea. Okay. You would have, <laughs> you would have had the slack. You would have been the slacker or you would have. Yes. Been, 
<laughs> okay, then I would have been yelling at you being like, teacher, why'd you put me with him? And why is it? Because in real life, you have to work with other people. And what a life skill that is yes. in and of itself. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we didn't maybe like it at the time, but that was one of the most critical things. Yes. And now being a parent, you know, having my, my own kids saying, Oh, like, I don't like this teacher. I don't like, I don't like this, um, you know, classmate. It's like in life, there's going to be people that you don't get along with. You got to learn how to do it. You know? Amen. <laughs> Collaboration, which is a part of our profile of a graduate. Okay has to be explicitly taught and yeah. it has to be explicitly assessed because there are very few professions when you become an adult in which you're not going to have to collaborate. Right. And isn't that in essence what public education is about preparing you for whatever your future is? Yeah. So yeah, collaboration is huge, but we as educators have to showcase what that looks like better and why it's so important. It's not because we want you to go to Michael's and Staples and buy, you know, $50 worth of supplies for the projects. It's because you have to learn how to communicate with your partners. You're going to have to learn how to collaborate. Andrea is going to have to learn how to take other ideas that are not, that are not hers. <laughs> Matthew has to learn how to shape up and do his part and be held accountable. But you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, but but spinning that a little bit. So all you storytellers out there who are getting those projects, like I just had one where they did a Shark Tank uh, type of presentation and it was in groups. I could have easily said, hey, our kids worked in groups because then they, you know, and so teaching and kind of emphasizing that type of collaboration, teamwork that we're working on. So, um, oh my gosh, we talked about so many great ideas today, Matthew. <laughs> I'm so, our, and our time went so fast. So as we wrap up, um, what is the best way to stay connected to you? My Twitter is at Dr. Matthew Murphy. And my email is at Dr. Matthew, uh, Dr. Matthew Murphy at Verizon.net. Okay. So I'll link both your email and your Twitter handle yeah. in the show notes. Definitely, if you have any questions on the profile um, of a graduate or any of what um, Dr. Murphy talked about today, you can definitely reach out. Um, obviously, uh, another great leader that is stepping in to shape the leaders of tomorrow. And it's so great to have somebody that believes in the positivity and the good things about social media. I know there's negative uh, still out there, but we can really use it to kind of shape that narrative. And, and you've, you've displayed so many different ways that our schools can do that. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It's always a pleasure to see and talk to you, Andrea. Best wishes and uh, look forward to connecting later on. Yes. Awesome. And everybody, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week with a awesome episode. If you're listening to this live, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Yep. You might have not realized that, but let's show your school some love out there on social media as well. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.